So today, I'm gonna to review those properties one more time with you because they honestly were not paying attention and didn't realize what they had to do, even though I explained it in class. So today, I wanna to walk through, okay? Um, so again, we're dealing with quads and any other type of polygon, uh, but chapter six is about the quads itself. But the first theorem that we had was the interior angles. One of the quads today, one of the six groups you have, will be having to find all the interior angles added up for a polygon. The polygon can be any shape, but you can use this formula to figure out what all of them add up to be. So one of the groups in here will have this. It'll say find the sum of the interior angles. That's all it says on the little instruction. Okay? The sum means to add all the angles together, the interior angles, all the angles on the inside. It can be any sided, so they say n sided. So if you have a, a dodecagon or a 20 gon, you can find those. Um, they have to be convex, so there can't be any caves to them, and they have to be polygons, straight edges, no curves, okay, so no, uh, no conic sections. But this is the formula that, you, that we used, okay? However many sides you have, or how many uh, vertices there are, corners, uh, the, the actual dots in the corners, that's the number that goes in here. I think some people just were struggling with that, like they just didn't know what number to plug in. It's how many walls you have or how many dots are in the corner, they're the same number, or angles in the corner. Uh, so, you know, I think the other day, I think somebody had a 23 gone. Okay, so you put 23 in there, so 23 minus two, and then you take that times 180 degrees. Okay, 23 minus two is 21, and we take that times 180. And that gives me all the angles added up. Now I'm going to actually tap that my calculator. Because again, you'd want to have a calculator today as we go through the work. So 180 times 21, which is uh, 3,780 degrees. That's all the angles on the inside added, added up. Now, I don't know what they are. I just know that that's what they add up to be. Because it doesn't have to be regular. Uh, what do I mean by a regular picture? Where all the walls and all the angles are the same. It doesn't have to be there. Um, it can be any style of polygon, but this is the formula you use to find all the angles that add up in the inside. Okay, they have to be this. Now, what we can do with that, if you know the picture is regular, if it is regular, you can find one of the angles by themselves. And that was the part, I think, that really got people stuck yesterday. Because I even talked about it in class. I even said how to do it for a, for a pentagon. Oh, and I even said it for the 84 gone. I think that was the example I used yesterday. But, but what you have to do is if you know that they all add up to be this, and you wanted to find one of them by themselves, just one, if, they, if they're all the same angle, you divide this number by how many angles you have. Well, in this case, I had 23 different angles, because it was a 23 gone. So there's 23 angles on the inside. So if I divide this number by 23, that gives me what each angle should be separately. So. If I do this, uh, this is 3,780 divided by 23. That is, each angle on the inside will be 164 degrees, roughly. It's 164.3. Angles are really big. The bigger, you know, the bigger the uh, the shape, the more walls there are, the bigger the angle gets on the inside because it's starting to look like a circle. They're starting to flatten out on the inside. But that would be the angle for each one on the inside by themselves if it was regular. Now, if it's not regular, that means it's not the, the angles are not the same, they're not, the walls are not the same, that would not be your number. It could be, it could be one of them, but it doesn't have to be all of them, right? Um, if, if my 23 gun was random, you would just have to put random numbers in there that add up to be 3,780. And that would be, that would be kind of uh, the style of how you do that. Any questions with how to find the interior angles or how to find one of them? That was something that I, people just weren't paying attention to yesterday. It wasn't you guys, it was just my later periods. It was, it would have been comical if I recorded them and watched it. They just could not figure that out. Okay, everyone's got the formula down? You know how to use it now? Okay, going on to the second ones. The second theorem, and again, this is called the interior angle theorem. So, okay, the second one here is the sum of the exterior. Well, there was one group yesterday that, I'm not joking, it was one of the groups in here, their instruction was find the sum of the exterior angle of, I think it was a, 
it was like a 500 gon. It was one of the challenge questions. It was one of the critical thinking questions. It was find the sum of the measures of the exterior angles on a 500 gon. Well, it doesn't matter what size of polygon you have. When you add up the exterior angles, they always make 360. It was a kind of a trick question. That's all it was. It was just 360. Because it doesn't matter the shape, the angles on the outside always add up to be the same number. So, um, you know, if you had a, I don't, know, I don't, I don't think I've done a hexagon for a while. So here's a hexagon, six sided. So there's my little hexagon. The exterior angles are when you extend the wall straight. That's an exterior angle. You just go around clockwise, extending them straight. These are the angles you'd have to add up, and they always make that. Like no matter what, if it's regular or irregular. Now, to find what one of them should be, just one of these, and one of these angles, what you'd have to do is you take the 360 and divide it how many, by how many angles there are on the outside. Well, in my case, since this is a hexagon, it has six sides, you know, six sided figures. So you divide it by six. And this turns out to be, what, 60? Each angle should be 60 on the outside. That kind of looks like roughly what they are. They're kind of smaller. That's if it's only, if that's, that's if it's regular. They would all be 60s. If they're not regular, they would have to be somewhere around 60, but they could be different numbers. But they they would have to add it to be 360 anyway. So they could be close to 60, maybe 59, 58, 57. You can put those different numbers in there, and you could add them up to be 360. Okay, questions about the second one. That was again, that was a question I got a lot yesterday. I think it was like I think it was like the fourth group that had that, like the fourth pod. You had to find the, the measure of one exterior by itself. Well, you had to take 360 divided by how many walls there were. But again, if, you, if it just asks for finding the sum of all of them together, then you just say it's 360 to move on. But they wanted one of them, you have to divide by how many walls there are. And again, this is called the exterior angle theorem, all that good stuff. So there you go. Last formula we had, find the number of diagonals. Number of diagonals, this is our extra property. So if you were gone yesterday, this is the extra one we got. The sum of the diagonals of an n-sided convex polygon. So the diagonals are the, the lines that go through the middle of the picture. They connect dots that are, are, that are not already connected. Um, this is the formula that we use. So if I go to that hexagon, I shouldn't erase that shape. So if I go back to this hexagon, I don't think I did this problem yesterday for you guys. You pick one of the vertices, uh, one of uh, the vertex, and you draw the diagonals through the middle of the picture. They have to go through the interior. Well, you could draw it. You could connect this to all the other dots that's not already connected to. That would take you a while. You'd have to add them all up and see how many diagonals there are. There's three from that, that one by itself. And then you have to go to the next one and draw those diagonals and go to the next one. And you don't want to, you don't want to go over top. But this formula can save you time from drawing it. Because all you do is you put the number of walls times, or the number of vertices, times the number of walls minus three. And whatever that answer is, you divide it by two. And that will give you how many total diagonals are in this picture. Because what it's doing is it's taking each corner figure out how many, ver uh, how many diagonals come from that corner by itself, and when it multiplies them together, it figures out total numbers, but it'll be, two, it'll be double the amount of what you need, because I don't want to overlap, so then you divide by two. So if this is a hexagon, you have six-sided figure times six minus three, and then you divide by two. So six minus three is, is what, three? And then you multiply those together, that gives me 18, and I divide by 2. So there should be 9 diagonals on this picture, if I actually draw them all. So there's already 3. I go to the next vertex, 4, 5, 6. That one's already drawn, 7, 8. And the last one, go to this dot, 9. So there's 9 total diagonals. And it always makes kind of a star-like pattern when you do it. But again, you, you would not need to draw. Because I, I told you yesterday, like when you get past a hexagon, the number explodes. 
like it goes crazy how many diagonals there were. I think the example I gave you yesterday, if you had a 23 gon, you had 230 diagonals in that picture. Because you take, you take 23 times 23 minus 3, which is 20. So 20 times 23 is 460, and then you divide by 2, there's 230 diagonals. I would never want to draw those. I couldn't even keep track of 9 almost. I almost lost track of that, let alone going 230 of them. But again, this is the total number of unique diagonals in a picture. And again, they are unique. I'm not overlapping other ones. Okay, questions at all? All right, this is what our homework's going to be. Now, I'm going to hand out homework today because I know some people are gone tomorrow and stuff. Um, at the very, you know, last part of class, or maybe the last 15 minutes, I will hand out um, the homework and stuff. Uh, I have a couple of people that still need to take tests. I will be entering test scores no matter what today so you can actually see what your score is. Um, I'm not going to wait any longer. It's getting ridiculous. So I need to get people to get those tests done. I took them last week. So I'll enter test scores no matter what today because I think the last few people have to finish it today. So. All right. Questions at all? Perfect. All right. Uh, let's get to our little activity today. So each group's going to have their own directions. Um, after a little bit, we'll move. I'm going to ask that your group has a piece of paper separate. Do not have it with your notes on it. So I have a separate sheet of paper. Tear it out. If you have the paper from yesterday, you can use that one. Um, you don't have to. You can use a new one in case you're gone. Um, but you have to answer the question for the pictures in here. So what you need to do is when you start, your group needs to put their name on that piece of paper. And then when you start your problem, whatever one you're doing, you, you have to write what group you're starting at. So this is group one. You have to write down the three objects. There's three pictures in each envelope. Okay. Once you have your three written down, um, like what they are, then you have to answer the question that's on the page. That's about it. So here you go. Two, three in each envelope. So you got to make sure you're doing all three. So again, write your names down on a piece of paper. You need to classify the uh, polygon when you first open it, so figure out how many walls it has, and then you got to answer the question per picture. You should be writing down those classifications, writing down what group you're in, because I'm checking each one today. You will hand this paper in in about 15 minutes or less. Actually, yeah, about 15 minutes. I'm going to cycle through the formulas. I'm going to try to make sure that it goes a little bit slower today. The directions are in there, they're printed on a little piece of paper. Remember, do not write on the envelope, do not write on the actual pictures themselves. So don't do that. So make sure that you leave those pictures blank. Do we have to do that then? You have to do whatever the question asks. So if it asks for number of diagonals, yeah, you have to do that. If it asks for interior angles, you have to use the interior angle for them. If it asks for exterior, you have to use the exterior angle for them. Some of them ask for just find one angle by itself. Some ask, you have to make up your own numbers for the corners. You have to make up your own numbers that actually make that thing work. And it adds up to be the right number. This one's 10, this one's 5, this one's 4. Find possible value. Triangle. Uh, if you're going to find one, you just divide. If you're going to find one angle by itself, you divide. But if it asks you to just find the sum of all the exterior, you just want it to say. Um, 85. No, Okay, this is going to go quick. I'm going to give you about two minutes per station, so you don't have a lot of time. So your goal should be to write down like what those pictures are and what the question is, and then each member should be helping out. Because you don't have a lot of time. You won't you can't get this done if you have one person doing all the work. It has to be a group effort.
stations are easier than others so when you get to one of those easy stations that's where you can kind of catch up if you've been writing down what the previous problems have been if you didn't get them done again you, it has to be a group effort I'm making this time such a way that you can't you can't just have one person doing all the work especially when you get to certain stations okay the so stand up and move you have two minutes wait there we second down Again, the formals are cycling on board and helping them take the notes down. Yeah, the number of walls. It's also the same as the number of dots in the corner or the number of angles in, inside. Yeah, they're all the same. So, uh, do it the same way with 360. No, it's 25. Oh yeah, you can definitely get a decimal. Yeah, especially when you're finding one angle by itself, you can definitely get a Oh. I guess technically, yeah. I mean, um, four sides. Should we? Yeah, I mean, technically you could because if you have an odd number of walls, it's 23 on it. Is that still 2 feet? Oh, so so what about if it's even? So 4 minus 3, no, 6. 6 minus 3 is 18. I think you should get an even number. Or question on. So now you have to you have to make up your own numbers that could be the interior numbers. They could be any numbers you want. But that's equal up to what they're all. Exactly. Got it. All right. Let's stand and move. Now remember, you should be writing down what those shapes are. You got to catch up on them later because there's so, there's a couple of pods here that are ridiculously simple. There's a couple that are not. Trust me, you'll get there. We didn't even write down one of those. So, there's a five in the No. Per picture, yep. That is now the Okay. I'll just give you the the value of one exterior angle. What is this one? You want to do the external one or you want to do the internal one? So, so we can just do the. Four. Yeah. You want to do the one eighty eight. Yeah, one You're wrong. Right the word triangle. Okay. 14.
What the problem is, and then you gotta stand up and move, and you can catch up on them later. You gotta write down what the question is, and catch up on it. Yeah. Last two stations, five and six. Those are the top ones. Where you So do I? So you're going to have to find the total exterior total, and then get it kept divided. Okay. So you should end as well. Remember, you should be writing down what each picture is and then answer the question. What's this one? Some of the stations are easier than others. That's it. Finding interior, one's exterior. There's a couple that find single angles by themselves, and there's a couple where you have to make it your own angles yeah. that make the problem work. Okay. Yep. At least you get the whole Oh, I get it. Oh, I didn't use my bird. 
I'm quick. Okay, your last station. Again, write down the problem, write down the picture, and then answer the question for each one. And this is your time when you're at those easier stations to get caught up on ones you didn't finish from previous ones. Again, it's got to be a total group effort. We're moving too fast. This, is, this should be your last station. This is the way it do that. Does that go ahead to multiply? I know, I thought it was 360 divided by how many walls are here if you need to get caught up finish one that maybe you didn't quite get you didn't wrap up one you couldn't quite get what it was asking for like because the last two stations are probably the hardest you had to make up your own numbers make sure it worked yeah. the other ones you just had to do a simple calculation and just write off an answer but those last two were the tough ones so if you need to get caught up okay if if you are done completed finished however you want to say it you can put your group name at the top make sure every member is accounted for and then you can turn in the basket, we'll get participation points. If you use the sheets from yesterday, that's fine. Turn that in, um, that could be the sheet that you have. But it should have each answer on it. Again, it's just participation. Uh, it's just one of those things I wanna see if you guys are actually actively trying to get these things done. It does, those work quick. That two minutes does go by a lot faster than you think it does. Just because you do have to do calculations. Yeah, yeah. Think about. Need a okay. All right, we're good though, everyone got it? Okay, now, if you don't need any more time, and, you, and you're and you going to walk it up here in a second and turn that in, uh, here's the last thing that I wanted to cover today. Okay? Apologies. It's automatically cycling. Yep, you'll have to tear that out, and you'll have to turn that in here in a second. All right, here you go. Here's the last thing I'm on the cover. What is going on here? Stop cycling. Show, show, stop the endless loop. What's the always on this? Oh, six number, yeah. I forgot. I was trying to listen to that. All right. 
There you go. Here's your homework. It's going to be due Monday. Now, as I kind of warned you earlier this week, I am gone tomorrow. Um, I'm gone um, all day. So this assignment um, is something you'll have plenty of time tomorrow in class to work on it as well. Uh, the sub who will be here uh, will have a few notes for you, but it will be me teaching. I'll, I'll have a video for you to kind of watch. Um, it'll just be kind of an intro on the ne next section. The, uh, uh, they will give you plenty of time to work on this. It is what we did today. Uh, in fact, some of the problems you actually did were the homework problems. I just printed them off. So you actually got some practice doing that. And you got to ask questions. Now, I did add a little stipulation. Any time in your homework, if you're writing this down, any time in your homework where one of the problems has a diagram or picture of a polygon, a picture of it, not just words like, oh, it's a 23 gun, but it actually has a picture. On that problem, you have to do whatever the question asks, you'll find interior angles or exterior. But you also have to find the diagonal on that specific problem. There's only a select few that come in six rooms. Okay? It looks big and menacing. It's really not. Like some of the problems will say, find the sum of interiors. Some of the problems say, what is one exterior angle? What is one interior? But the ones that have pictures, you have to find the diagonals as well. So you have to do that off to the side. You don't have to draw them. You just have to tell me what that number is and just label it. This homework should be easy if you have a calculator and you have those formulas. Okay? There's really no tricky question at all. There's a couple where you're going to have to solve for x. I will make sure that tomorrow I'll do a couple examples on the PowerPoint just to refresh your memory and how to do some of this stuff. Um, and I might even put a homework problem on that video, so if you're paying attention, you might get a freebie. But this assignment will be due Monday, but you should have plenty of time. The sub will probably give you probably 30-some minutes to kind of work tomorrow uh, or so. Um, it should be close to that uh, just because... Uh, the video is going to be short. It's going to just quickly review the problems that, that are on the homework. It'll kind of briefly introduce what we're going into next. I'll kind of show you what we're going into. Uh, and then it'll give you time to work on your homework. Okay? And I'll make sure I'll attach the website. You can watch it if you need to. But I think this should be easy enough. But there you go. And again, if you see um, Nick or if you see Steph tomorrow, um, you know, if they're back, uh, make sure you remind them of their homework. I'll have it written on the board up here, but just remind them of the rules that I wanted. That. Okay, hopefully you've turned in your group work on there. So you have the stations clearly labeled. You have all of your members accounted for. I have three groups so far, like four, four groups, perfect. Mm -hmm. Flowers, who's drawing that? Like 40, like. Mm -hmm. There's five. Mm -hmm. My last group is still working, I guess. Mm -hmm. 